Hello everyone and welcome to TechFlow for Government and Public Facilities brought to you by Zentech Consultants. Uh, TechFlow is a recurring video cast uh, where we focus on publicly accessible venues, right? And, and we talk about the best technology practices and procedures that we have been implementing for our clients here at Zentech. Um, you know, whether it's schools, airports, municipal buildings, hospitals, restaurants, any public space that you deal with, we're going to talk to you guys about better ways to manage and control those using simple technologies you probably already own. I am Jim Coppinger, one of the principals here at Zentech Consultants. Uh, and today I want to talk to you guys about creating digital dashboards with any and all file types. Uh, you know, one of the, the first things that does come up when I when I show people these digital dashboards that we've been talking about in our tech flow for government and public facilities set up here is they tend to think that because we're using PDFs, base PDFs as our drivers, that that's all that we can work with in a dashboard. And and their initial reaction is, well, you know, I'm a, I do a lot of design work or I work in Word most of the time or I've got these, you know, different third-party apps that I use and, and we can't, you know, deal with just PDFs. We don't do a lot of PDFs. And that's fine. The thing that I want you guys to take away from this, right, is that you can have access to whatever file types, whatever data you need through these digital dashboards that we've been discussing, right? It's, it's a huge, powerful way for you to be able to work and immediately access any file. I don't care what it is, right? Graphically, right? So I, I want to kind of walk you guys through just some basic examples of this today. Right? And, and we're going to start with the most basic form of all, right? Which is where most people tend to think, you know, oh, that's all it can do. And, and it's what I want you to understand. We can do it with PDFs, but it's not limited to PDFs, right? So if the first thing you need to do is, is link your dashboard to other PDFs. And it, you know, when we're, you know, when I'm building these kind of dashboards, I usually do tend to work in Bluebeam Review for building these because it does an absolutely amazing job of integrating and connecting all of this data more powerfully than anything else I know of. Um, but you see that what I've done here is I've taken the, you know, this is basically just the same file we've used in other, other, uh, Video cast, you see some of our, you know, additional buttons and links just to show you. And I'm just going to use some basic um, text links today, all right, to show you what I'm talking about. All right, but these can be buttons or graphics. The, you know, the links don't really matter. I just want to show you that we can access whatever data. All right, so exactly what you would, would expect right here on the first link, we need to link to another PDF file. I want to open up from this PDF to a different PDF and, and I can, you know, chain a hundred of those together. Um, it's simple. You're just going to add the link and when you click on it, exactly what you would expect it opens up right, another PDF, which has in addition its own links and buttons and controls, right? Building that graphic dashboard that takes us through all of our data access in a really you know, simple to use intuitive fashion, all right? So PDFs, we've talked about those before. I'm not gonna get too crazy on that, all right? But I also wanna talk about linking to design, whether it's a DWT or an RVT or any other kind of data file. Right, that you know we're we're really looking to be able to access you know floor plans and design files and sections and what's behind the wall, right? And we're dealing with facility control type situations or you know uh, lease space type of structures in the government. Right? Finding the actual design files and you know being able to you know click on a specific room and see you know what's you know the layout and the design and take dimensions for a you know a new piece of equipment or a new layout. How do we deal with that? Well, we do that the exact same way. All we do is create a link to the actual design file. Now, here's the thing. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this and talk while this opens up. All right. Notice that what's happening, Bluebeam itself works with PDF and image files. Got it. But when we create these links inside of the PDFs using a tool like Bluebeam, what we're getting are the direct links to that type of file and automatically Bluebeam will launch whatever program you have installed on your machine to work with that type of a file, right? So you notice that in this case, it opened up for me AutoCAD. I have AutoCAD installed. This is a DWG, which is a native AutoCAD file type. It opened up my building design here, you know, inside of AutoCAD for me so I can just go ahead and start doing my CAD and design work, right? 
I can just instantly go right to the file without having to know where it is or what version to go to, et cetera. It's all handled here in the linking, right? So we can easily go in and deal with design files that way. Right? We can also link to any type of Microsoft file type, right? They're the most common, you know, whether it's, you know, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, et cetera, access databases, it doesn't matter. I can link to any Microsoft file type directly from my PDFs. All right, so again, we're just gonna jump back. All right, and I'll, I'll do two examples. So same exact thing. Say I have this link, I need to link to an Excel file. It's a pricing and takeoff sheet. That is very important that people fill it out for this, this project or this job, whatever we're linking to. They can just go ahead and click on it and you see it launches Excel and opens up the exact file that I need with all the data. And now I can just go ahead and do my work right here in Excel, save it, close it, and I'm right back to the master level and the current active file has been edited. Nobody had to worry about where's the latest version, what's the right revision, where do I get to that, what server it's on. All right, same thing, Word documents work exactly the same way or any other kind, right? So if I just wanna open up a Word document instead, right, you can see that it automatically opens up for me this Word document, right? Here's an article I wrote on, uh, you know, BricsCAD and CAD for construction companies. Uh, but it's a Word-based document. It doesn't matter if it's a PowerPoint and any kind of, of Office 365 document is going to work just fine in this type of a, of a dashboarding environment. And lastly, what I want to talk about here is linking to random software file types. Um, and this is where people do tend to get worried, right? Specifically when we get into uh, you know, government and large scale public facility structures where you guys have a lot of you know, proprietary or very, very industry specific software systems, right? You, you, you know, you went out to bid, you know, as a government and, you know, local municipality and somebody developed a program just for you guys. And it's got its own very special types of files, right? Or maybe using some really esoteric I don't know, structural support analysis tool that you need for, because you're dealing with multi-story buildings that you know carry heavy loads for you know a, an industrial facility. It doesn't matter, right? We can link to any software file type. So long as the program to edit and access those file types is installed on your machine, these links are going to work. So if you, you know you got a link to some random file that's, you know, dot, you know, GBZA, that's the file type, we can link to those files and it will launch in the specific program. So I'll show you what I mean. So I actually have a, uh, we, we uh, develop and, and sell a lot of our own tools here. So we have kind of a, a program, a very small little program that we use to bundle and create executable files. Um, and it uses a .aip file. What is that? Who knows? Nobody on the planet other than us here at Zentex really know what that is for. And it doesn't matter because all I have to do is create the link to one of my AIP files. Then I can just click on it. And you see, just like that, it opens my AIP file. Sorry, I went on my other screen, right up inside. So you see, here's my AIP file. And now I can go in and I can do the work and, and you know, bundling and, and building the executable files that we use here at Zentech for our prepackaged software systems. That's what I mean, right? And what I want you guys to take away from this entire discussion today is that there is no limitation in terms of what files, what data, what information you can access, whether it's a website, whether it's a file, it's a random file type by some, you know, little tiny third party software or a software that you paid a, you know, uh, you know, someone to code and develop specifically for you. Any and all data can be integrated directly into these digital dashboard systems. Hey, that's what takeaway is for today. And that's what we like to talk to you guys about here on TechFlow for government and public facilities. And I'll see you in the next episode.